Can everybody hear me? Damn, where's everybody at? Friday. Fucking quarantine. Quarantine, but not here, huh? Every day is Friday. I'm gonna wait, I'll wait like five minutes. Uh, my day was, what I do? Um, my day was good. We, um, obviously I woke up, traded, fucking was in the group, uh, called things out and then I had to go to the office. Um, yeah, some guy, um, not some guy, I'm sorry. His name is Brian. He's in, uh, he's in our, he's in our, he's in CCX. He actually drove all the way from Colorado to LA to work with us um, with the um, whole solar business. So that was pretty exciting. Like literally, he he just came all the way out here without even knowing what the job <laughs> what the job was. I was like, holy shit! That's how you know people are dedicated, though. Yeah, he was like, he was like, he was telling us like, yeah, I trust this guy. Like that's why I came here. I was like, oh shit! That's when I knew it was real. Like damn, someone really came all the way over here. Yeah. So he we had to get them all set up, you know. We had to get him. Oh, there's a fucking fly in here. We had to get him all set up. Um, he's uh, he he. What he's doing is he's renting a um, he's renting a uh, an Airbnb here for for about a month. So, you know, I know he's gonna do good. So he can probably get his own place at the end of the month. What are you talking about, Umesh? For solar? So I'm working with like I work with like six different people and it's 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 you know that's how it started and then what we essentially do is we we like people who come in who want to work with us we teach them how to you know what we do is it's like it's a lot of door to doors a lot of, it's it's sales basically right but the thing is you know the product sells itself you know who wouldn't want to lower their 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 electricity bill. This is a regular sales operation. It's not like, you know, you bring someone in and then they pay, you know, no. It's like if I bring someone in and he doesn't do the work, he doesn't get fucking paid. That's it. All right. It's not like you come in and then you have to pay us, blah, blah, blah. No, like you come in, if you want to make money, then you, you, you're going to put in the work. You're going to work with us. You put in the work and that's it. Um, like I said, though, it's, it's a good thing. You know, we're in California and, and in LA, especially because it gets very fucking hot. So, <clears throat> um, I spoke to a couple people who own homes and commercial uh, real estate in Florida. The thing about fucking Florida is like, it's so fucking far. And it's like, if I want to, if you want to get something out there, if you want to help someone out there, it has to be like a, a, a commercial building or something. Guess my favorite car. <laughs> Guess it right now. It's 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 both. It's it's, it's I'm I'm either I'm 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 looking I'm I'm looking into the Takens or the or the five seven yes. My birthday is in September. I mean I don't know. I might thing is my dad wants a car, so I might buy him a car instead. My mom wants a house, so I have to, I'm gonna go buy her a house before I even get some shit for myself. That's my plan. Where's everybody at? This is pissing me off.
The test, yeah. How was the test? How was the test? I mean, I tried to make it hard, so hopefully it was kind of hard. You know, there's a lot of um, a lot of open-ended questions. Kind of makes you think, because uh, some tests are just like fucking true or false, A, B, C, D. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this really makes you think. I'm going to I'm going to do it um, this weekend to look over all of it. Yeah, and the video was crazy. A lot of people didn't even, a lot of people in the group didn't like, I mean, I took profits at 3.30, ran all the way up to 3, what, 3.36? But not even, the thing is, a lot of people didn't even hold it um, until the first profit target. And I think I have an example today. Because today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over, like, all the callouts and then how, how, like, how I kind of ended up, you know, signaling the callouts and how, Everyone can do the same exact thing I'm doing. Um, those aren't courses. Those are guides that I've made. So the swing trading one, I literally just made like two days ago. I haven't finished it yet. It's going to have like 40 pages. The price action, the price action one is actually like a really good one where I kind of explain like one minute, five minute, 15 minute. They're not courses. They're just guides. They're like 30 pages each. And then um, like 20 bucks, it's not, it's nothing major. It's just like um, the first three I made like a year and a half ago. I just never put them out there for people to see because you know, I don't like to, I don't like fucking being one of those people that are like, hey, buy my stuff. You know, like if someone asks then yeah, cool, I'll, I'll tell you, you know. So the first three are just like the basics and then four, five, six, four, five is a lot of um, Bollinger Bands, EMAs, divergences, six things we went over, just um, cramped up into one guide. And it's like a lot of examples, like different time frames. And then six and seven, the price action one is a my favorite one and then I mean actually I think the swing I think the swing one is my favorite one because I kind of broke down how to like exact like pinpoint like just step by step but I didn't even look at flow I'll go today honestly it's just sometimes flow I'll go messes with my head like I see like, oh, a million sweep and spy. And then I'm like, I immediately think like, I immediately catch them like a level of like FOMO sometimes when I read them. I'm like, fuck, should I get it now? <laughs> there's, a, there's a golden sweep, should I get it? You know, sometimes you gotta look at the expiration of, of whoever's buying it. Like, let's say you see, like, a $3 million sweep. Like, oh, shit, $3 million. Next thing you know, expiration date, 2022. You no? Know? What is the flow algo room? Okay. So, flow, so flow algo, right? Um, first of all, the service, the, the, the flow algo that we have, the, fur, the, 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 the flow algo that we have in the group, we pay for that. We pay every month just to have that in the group. If you were to 
for example, if you were to subscribe to Flow Algo, their website, I mean, we don't use their data, I believe. I don't know if we use their data. But, you know, theirs is like fucking $250 per month or, or 150 bucks per month just to, just to have it, you know. And then the fact that we have that on our, on, our, on our Discord now, you know, a lot of people can see that kind of information and they don't have to necessarily pay that, pay that fucking price just, just to have that. So what it does is like gives you, it lets you know, you know, um, there's this thing called sweeps. So if, for example, if there is, doesn't even have to be an institution, like if someone was to try to buy $10 million worth of spy calls, right? They don't want to show that whole order. For example, on a level two, you don't want to, they don't want to show that whole order. So what they do is they break it down into like 2 million, 2 million, 2 million, 2 million. You know, that's called sweep. They have this thing called sweeps, blocks, then they have a, a golden sweep. A golden sweep is when there's a huge amount, right, being bought. And that's when you got, that's when you kind of get into like dark pools, things like that, where it's like dark pools don't have that much regulation when it comes to buying and selling. They try to kind of hide it from the public, hide their positions. Like you can't see it. Fuego is just a tool, honestly. It's not something that you need. It's just a tool. It's just one of those. It's just one of those things. Like, oh shit, you know, I got, I got flow algo. I'm fucking cool. You know, it's like that. In my opinion, I don't use it like that. I just wanted everyone in the group to kind of have something like that so they can, you know. Right, should I start now? I'll just start now. <clears throat> Uh, how's everyone's day today? What did you guys trade? What um? How'd you guys do? You guys get faked out? I know a lot of people in the group got like faked out today, or just couldn't find the right entries, or just traded too too early. You guys have a good day today. You guys have a green day at least. Um, does anyone does anyone want any trading books like suggestions? By the way, all right. Look, I have because I, I have the books on me right now. Let me give me, give me one second. All right. <clears throat> Do here. Write this down. I have. This is for th these two are for charting. Okay, if you want to get, if you want to get your charting down to the fucking T. Here, uh, get this. This one is called Charting and Technical Analysis by Fred McAllen. So, M C A W -L, L E N. This shit was like fucking. I got this, so all my books, right? All my books that I get, it's either from Barnes and Nobles or I like to, <laughs> all right, don't, 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 don't fucking make fun of me, but I like to go to like Goodwill or I like to go to like a used bookstore and I just like, I like to just buy like a lot of fucking trading books from there because um, it's cheap. It's like $2, $2 per book. It's uh, his, the author is Fred, F-R-E-D, McAllen, M C A L L E N. It's considered the <laughs> the number one charting manual for for investors. And then this one is called the strategic the strategic the strategic electronic day trader by Robert Thiel. So this teaches you uh, momentum trading and trend trading. Um, in this book, there's not a lot of, um, it doesn't see, um, oh yeah, I, I'll show you guys the thing right now. This is Charting by Fred McCallan. My book's like fucked up because like, 
I would read this a lot, and I'll just like bend it, like when I'm reading it. And this one, strategic electronic day trader. And then you can have this one, um, options player. This is the fourth edition. I mean, you can fucking go buy the first, second, third one, but I just got this one. Yeah. By Kenneth R. Trester. Then this one is a good one. They have two of these, a green one and then this one. This is like the first one. Understanding options. Man, if you want to get into like investing, um, this is a good book, Wall Street Wizard. And this one, if you really want to get into investing, asset allocation. So this lets you know that this, this basically, um, you can understand how asset allocation works, uh, different like categories. You can like plan your own investment strategy. Um, you can, know how to like rebalance your portfolios. Um, this kind of goes over a little bit about real estate and commodities. Um, goes about, goes over taxes. Um, you can, you can learn how to manage risk with this book. Uh, historical rates of returns, um, how to kind of project your financial future apparently what it says and then if you really 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 like trading and you want to go you know beyond you can read this hedge funds for dummies this teaches you how to like this teaches you about like tax uh tax liabilities um how how hedge funds uh fail right understanding the legislation of hedge funds and yeah, that's about it for those books. Any, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna sh I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you all my favorite books for a start, all right? Show you this. Just because someone asked me about psychology books, don't get me started. Okay, I have this book, it's called Frequency. The Power of Personal Vibration. This is a great fucking book. Switch on Your Brain. This is by Dr. Caroline Leaf. The Key to Peak Happiness, Happiness Thinking and Health. Principles, a lot of people might know this book, Principles by Ray Dalio. How many people know this book? Principles by Ray Dalio. If you guys don't know who this is, he fucking runs a hedge fund and he's a beast. This is a good book, Rework. This is by um, Jason Fried and David Hennemeyer Hansen. Then you have this book, which is probably, this is probably, this and Frequency are my top favorites. The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, okay? What this basically teaches is like, this teaches people how to manifest things, right? Because your subconscious mind is very powerful and whatever you think, you know, you can literally become, I'm not saying if you think of, you think of a frog, you become a frog, but you know, and then this one, this is the last one, how to be, how to be a rainmaker. I didn't get, I didn't get my haircut. That's why I'm not showing myself. All right. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. That's, that's it for the class today. <laughs> Just kidding. Imagine.
Can you guys see my screen? Okay, so like I said earlier, um, I don't think this class is gonna be two hours. It might just be like an hour, an hour and a half, probably, but it depends. Just, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a lot of the plays that I did just this week, right? I'm just gonna go over this week. This is gonna be the same thing if, if, uh, if I went over last week's or last month's, right? But I wanna show you because the strategies I showed you, I wanna show you how much, how, how well it worked for, for this week, right? I don't wanna show you an example from like a year ago because you know, some, it might not work from, uh, you, might, you, might, you might think like, oh, he's showing us examples from a year ago, it probably doesn't work. So I'm showing you um, my signals and why I made those calls and how you can do it too, just using you know, how I, how my thought process, how I thought about the trades, so. Um, for questions, don't put the Q and A thing because sometimes I can't see it. So I'll just, so I would just, I'd rather just you type it in the chat. Yeah, Diana. I mean, I read, but sometimes I don't even read the full book. So I don't want, I don't want to say, oh, I'm a, I'm a crazy reader. All right, I'm just gonna start off with this, right? So this is a one-year, one-day chart on Shopify. Okay. I want you guys to tell me how many times, how many times did the stochastics cross on Shopify on the daily chart and how many times did it actually give you a signal to buy or I mean to go long and to go short, for example. Just, just from the stochastics, okay? We're not going over, we're not looking at volume right now. We're not looking at, I'm just showing you a, a yearly, a yearly, um, you know, a yearly flow on the, on the stochastics. How many times did the stochastics cross and work? Okay. Out of how many though? How many times did it cross and how many times did it work and cross? Is it six out of seven, five out of six, or seven out of eight? So it crossed once, twice, three times, four, five, six. You guys missed this. Seven, eight. I didn't highlight that for a reason. You know why? Because it, it crossed eight times, right? It crossed eight times. But essentially, how many times did it work? This is Shopify, okay? So remember, if you look at an average, if you, if you look at a daily average on Shopify, it, it, it has like a daily average of like 30, 40 to 50. So how many times did it really work? It worked seven times, right? Here, you got the cross here, right? And then you got the cross here, okay? This cross up right here, just this, okay? This is $100, by the way. This three candles is $100. This is a hundred dollars. Then it crossed down here, right? Cross down. That's a probably like a, oh yeah, that's a $200 move down. And then it crossed back up here, another $150 move up, cross back down, cross back up. Now, which one of these setups do you think we, we usually follow with our strategy, for example? How many times did our, our, our strategy work? Twice. Once, twice, right? When in doubt about stochastic crossing, is it fair to zoom in a little lower time frame to get confirmation? Yeah, of course. You know, um, if there's a cross on a on a daily chart, more than likely you're gonna see that on a four hour chart. Just just you're you're more likely gonna see a cross on a four hour chart, but not I'm, I'm talking about like if you see this crossing now, then on a four hour you might you might have seen it crossing like maybe like two days before. Does that make sense? So seven out of eight, right? And then with our strategy, it worked twice, okay? It worked eight times, okay? I mean, I'm sorry, it, we, we had eight crosses and it worked seven times. And one, this is a yearly time frame. So imagine you, okay, just, just, just for example, right? Let's say you like, you want to, you just trade the stochastics. Okay. And let, let's say you're, let's say you're a swing trader. Okay. If you just use the stochastics on a daily chart, 
do you think you would have been profitable on, on this year, this year, just trading Shopify? If you trade Shopify um, eight times, um, seven times, uh, if you traded Shopify eight times and you were able to capture all these, these crosses, right? And, and you were to, let's say you knew the average of Shopify's ATR was like 30, 40, 50, and you take profits after every 10, 20, $30 move. And let's say you start off with like $50,000. You risk, let's say you risk 10,000 each time you swing. It would be crazy, huh? I'm just throwing out random numbers out there, but that would, that would be a crazy return. But of course, you don't want to trade solely based on that. But look, let, 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 me, let, let me say this though. If you just traded, if you traded the, um, what's that word? If you traded the confluence, do you guys know what confluence means? What's a confluence? Agreement, right? What is an agreement when you're looking at stocks? A confluence in this, in, in this example is EMA plus the stochastics together, right? Now, when we look at crosses, what, do you, what, what usually crosses first though? Like what, do you, what would you rather see cross first before the other? Stochastics, right? Now, this is Amazon. This is today. This is today. Right? This is today. 15 minute 15 minute chart. Did, did anybody look at the 15 minute chart on on Amazon today? Just you can say no, it's fine. <laughs> You're guilty. But look, what would you do? What would you do if you saw the stochastics crossing? And then you, and then you're about to see the EMA cross right here. You would watch, right? You would watch, but essentially, you would plan to go long, right? You would plan to go long, right? So it doesn't matter. I mean, we're just looking at Amazon for this example. You know, this happens on literally every single stock, right? It happens. Now let's um, let's pull up the uh, the five minute. I'm gonna I'm gonna go on my charts and look at it there. Uh, tell me when you guys can see the screen, okay? All right. Oh snap! Now look at this. This is a five minute chart on Shopify today. Okay, this is a five minute chart on, shop, on I'm, I'm sorry, on Amazon. <clears throat> what do you guys see? Just, 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 just from looking at it. There's a flag here, obviously, right? So let's do this analysis together on, on, on Amazon. Now let's go, let's pretend, right? Let's pretend like, here, let, let me make the, um, let me make the, uh, the support and resistances because I, I like to take it off before I show examples. Now, what time frame? Let's say let's say Amazon has not, let's say the day has not started yet, right? What do you want to be looking at time frame wise? Let's do an analysis on Amazon. Where do you want to start? Okay. This this what well, what we're about to do right now should be just your whole process when it comes to um, doing analysis and stuff. Start off with the weekly first, obviously, right? The top. Now, do I need, do I really need to go hit this bottom? No, that thing is so fucking far away. Amazon's never going to go back to $800. Just Im imagine if Amazon went to $800, like, gosh, the economy would fail. That'd be fucking insane. I, w I, I would not even look to buy stock. I would just be like, damn, I feel so bad. So, right, middle. Do I need to do this bottom right here? No, right? Just, just when, like, for example, um, the reason I say this is because Amazon is, is, is what kind of stock? Amazon and Shopify is what kind of stocks? No, not defensive, not e-com. I'm, I'm looking for another word. What does, the, what does Amazon and Shopify have in common? Look, I'm gonna show you Amazon. I'm gonna show you shop. What do they have in common? 
Shopify, Amazon. Now let me pull up Beyond. Same same thing. Let's just a little more trash. They are what growth growth stocks, right? They're, they're just look at the growth, right? Growth, right? Look at the growth. If they didn't, my what I'm trying to say is the way they move from the last five years is not is nothing compared to let's say let's look at. Facebook, look at Facebook, the past three years, right? And then look at Amazon, past three years. Look at Shopify, last three years. Look at AMD, last three years. Now, what is the uh, similarity between the three of those? The similarity is growth. The fact that they grew so fast, right? Now, when you're making support and resistance, since you're looking at this stock, it's a growth stock, right? You, you don't need to focus on, for example, right? Right now it's at 24.75. You don't need to worry about uh, anything that's under 2000, for example, right? Because it's $400 away, right? Uh, while you're charting Amazon, how often do you rechart your lines? I only rechart my lines when I'm like doing class. So basically every, <laughs> every two days. So look, right? Weekly, right? We're at the weekly now. First of all, I just like to spot things first, right? Even though it doesn't matter to me right now, right? I just like to spot things. This is a range, right? Obviously, this is a range. Now, when you make your support and resistance on the weekly, is does this count as, as support? Does this count as a level right here? Some people say yes. Some people say no. I say yes. Why? Why is it a yes? What time frame am I looking at? It's a weekly time frame. It has two weeks, but I'm looking at a weekly time frame, right? That means every candle represents one whole week. So even though this is two candles, how many times do you think it tested on a four hour chart, on a five, on, a, on, a, on an hourly chart? It must have been multiple times, right? So that's the whole point when you're, for example, looking at weekly charts, right? This could be one right here. This is a good one. This is a support right here. Oh, shoot. And then this is one. So now that I have that, right, I'm going to go to the four hour. I'm sorry. I'm going to go on the daily. Daily. I don't care about this right here. So look at all this consolidation. You guys see like how, how, how consolidated this is? Like this is waiting to break out. Like how many, like, does anyone think that this is ready, getting ready to break out, by the way? This is literally getting ready to fucking break out. That's why I swung Amazon. Things I swung Amazon last night until this morning and it didn't do anything in the morning. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sell it so I can get into something else. Right. Uh, I did that. And then I, it fucked me over because it ended up running like the last hour, last two hours. Okay. Now, um, is this, am, am, am I good for all the support resistances or am I missing some? Am I missing one, two? Am I missing anything? Right there. That's it. Now go to the four hours. This is the four hour. This is one. This is one. Now, some of you might be like, wow, dude, those, those lines are so close together. Okay. They're so close together, but look how far the prices are apart from each other. All right. I'm looking at a four hour chart, even though they look so close together, this line right here is 2248 where this line is 2270. When, for example, when your support and resistances um, are that far in terms of margin, in terms of like, if it's like $10 apart, $5 apart, $6 apart, $20 apart, what is that an opportunity for you to do? So, especially if I'm looking at like AMD, for example, if my resistance or support is like $4 apart, that gives me, that makes, that, that lets me know that, hey, I can potentially swing this for that move. Does that make sense? That's why I like swinging stuff because I like capturing the whole move without, you know, stressing myself 
by day trading, for example. The reason why you stress yourself by day trading is because you're just anxious to see that move happen, right? You don't know, you don't, you really don't know how long it takes. Now, when you swing, you have room, you have time, you have time on your side. That's why I like doing that. Okay. Is this a good line right here? This is, this is a good line too. This is a good line. Now let's move on to the hourly. Hourly. This is a good one. This is a good one. Here, I'm going to look at this. Okay. I'm going to present today. Never happened. So today never happened yet. All right. Just remember that today has not happened yet. All right. Am I good for now? You guys think I'm good now? Like I'm fine. I don't need to do any more, right? It's, that's like doing too much now. All right. Five minutes. Okay. Pretend today never happened yet. So we're, we're going to go frame by frame. Okay. You guys see how I didn't do, I, I, I didn't make these yet. I, I didn't make it. Believe me when I say this, I didn't make it by looking at this. I made it by looking at everything else that's on the left. But you see how the resistance and support lines test even, even now, right? Now look, when I go this way, I'm looking at the price action here, right? Where is my entry for calls, for example? Where's my entry for puts? If you read... Oh, This was what? This is all chopped this morning. You guys remember this morning when it was like, oh man, like the market is so choppy today. Like it's Friday. We're going to sell off. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Sigan says, what do you make of the line tool? The thing is, if you use the line tool, you have to drag. You have to drag this with your, with your finger, right? You have to drag it with your finger. Whereas if you use the price level, this one, all you got to do is just click, click, and then it, it just makes a whole straight line, all right? Now, going back to this example here, all right? You see this price action, okay? Would you even get in at this break, though? Would you get in at this break? Just personal opinion. Some people would, some people won't. Some people like to use, it depends on what strategy you use, right? It depends. Right? It depends if you're just looking at straight price action, if you're looking at, cause not, not everyone, right? Not everyone uses the strategy that I use, which is the, you know, what I'm doing now the cross with the stochastics. Sometimes I don't even um, have the cross on, but that's just for good reference. Right? So essentially, right. You can get in there, right? Why is that a good entry for puts? You just broke out of support, right? And you had you already had the next profit target, right? Now, now, what is this candle right here? What is that candle on the support? Only look, okay, look, look, look. Only look at these types of candles on support or resistance, all right? That's an indecision candle. That's not a hammer. <laughs> Definitely not a hammer. But look, this is a what? What is it? Shooting star, doji, whatever, doji, right? So it essentially means indecision, right? Buyers and sellers, buyers and sellers can't decide what to do, where to go, right? But why is this a reversal candle though? You guys know why it's a, rever a reversal candle? Yes, exactly. It's a heavy, it's a rejection from that level, the support level right? Because it's at the support. When you're at the support, right? You're either going to get buyers there or you're just going to continue to sell off depending on, you know, the volume pressure, whatever, right? Now, when you see this doji and you look at the next five minute candle, what do you see on the stochastics? Now, using our strategy, what are we waiting for? 
after the stochastics cross. Okay. What's the difference? What's the difference between here and here? What is the difference? This is still at resistance. This is at resistance, but there is something that changed. EMA cross right here, but but just as the EMA cross, there is more volume than previous, right? Just look at this. It's not. I don't have it. I don't have it maxed out. I don't have it like pulled up, so you can't see like the full bar of it. So just based on looking at this, what is the key things you want to look for at resistance? At resistance. This is looking at resistance. You want to look for the volume and the cross, but you want us to cast it cross first, right? But that's our strategy, right? Now, where would your profit target be though? Two, three, eighty-one. Now, some people might be like, no, that's too far. That's way too far. Too far. Why is it not? Well, why is it not too far? Well, why is it not too far at all? It's not. Because Amazon moves like crazy. It moves a lot. Amazon can move like, like how many times have you guys seen Amazon move $50 without you even noticing? And you're like, what the fuck, guys? Amazon's up. Well, why didn't no one tell me this? Amazon is up. Now, just look at, I'm, I'm going to go over some psychology here, right? What usually happens when you see this, this kind of run, and then you see this candle, and then you see this candle? There is a way. Here, here, look. Just pause, all right? Pause. Now, when you have this kind of situation, okay? When you compare, for example, um, look at the lines on the stochastics, okay? What do we talk about when we talk about stochastics? What does stochastics mean? What is it a measure of? It, it measures momentum. Now, when it crosses above the 80, is it considered overbought or is it considered a lot of buying momentum? Right? It means a lot of buying momentum, right? Because if it was overbought, right? Just look at this, right? If it was overbought, shouldn't shouldn't Amazon go down here? If it meant if this meant overbought, shouldn't Amazon go back down right after this candle? If 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 it meant overbought, right? It should have went down here, should have went down here, should have went down here, should have went down here. But what the, what is the line? Where is the line facing? Is it facing down? Is it facing up? Is it facing straight? This, is, this, is there a sign that moment? Like, look at this, right? Here, guys, pay attention to this. Look at this go down, right? You saw this, you, uh, you saw the price going down here. As the price went down, what did the stochastics do in terms of how the line looks? I'm, I'm only talking about the red line, right? What did the line do? It wasn't, it wasn't like this. It wasn't like this. It started sloping down. Now, what did it do here? It just stayed straight. It's above the line. Remember, once it's above the line, there's a lot of, there's a lot, there's a, there's strong momentum going on. Does that make sense to you guys? So the next time you see this kind of candle right here and, 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 and you're so close to the profit target, but you start getting anxious. You're like, fuck, I don't want to hold this because this can potentially tank. Just look at the stochastics. As long as it's above that 80, you should be fine. Okay. If it does cross down, then yeah, you want to get the fuck out. <laughs> you want to get the fuck out of there. Okay. If it does start crossing down, then yeah, you just dip, okay? Only when it crosses down the top line. 
just just imagine here imagine someone who was trading um, um stochastics and they're like yeah yeah bro this is um this is overbought this is oversold so whenever it gets up here you want to you want to short you want to go bearish you want to be a bear okay cool i want to be a bear huh so what the fuck happened here i'm a bear i just lost everything fucking bear Look. Look. Look, look right here. Just pay attention for those who are asking, what if it crosses the purple line but it's still above the 80 line? Look, this one is still above the 80 line. Even though it crossed down. But what happened when it fell below the 80? Keeps crossing down, 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 down. It is a wild indicator. This is my favorite indicator used on all time frames, man. This is my baby. Now, let's go back to the slide. Right? We spent like fucking 30 minutes. We spent 30 minutes on the first slide. <laughs> it, we were on the, we're still on the first slide. I'm so dead. I was over here like, yeah, we're not going to spend two hours today. We're barely on the first slide. There's like 30 slides. I'm so dead. All right. Now, this is BABA, okay? Where is a good profit target for this, for this breakout here? Is this a good breakout, by the way? Why? Why is it a good breakout? Because you have the stochastics first. Then this with the bull flag. Okay, where where's the where's the where's the good profit target? I don't have the price on there, but just 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 um, if you just point out the candle, the high point. Where which high point? This high point, this high point, this high point. Right, the swing high. This is my next profit target for Baba. Now I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, but yeah, we did swing this so. I mean, over the weekend. Sorry. Here, um, I do want to mention one thing though. Here, make sure you guys know this. Um, know this, okay? Make sure you guys know this. So, when you have, for example, if you have a bull flag set up, right, and you want to swing something, are you more likely going to be more profitable on a week on a weekday swing or on a weekend swing? And tell me why. Are you more, are you going to be more, are you going to tend to be more profitable on a weekend swing or a weekday swing? Weekday swing. Right? Because weekend, it's not even about the theta anymore. Just weekend is just like, it's just, isn't it? It's, 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 it's kind of scary to swing on a weekend because you don't know what's going to happen during the weekend. <laughs> like what's going to happen? What, what kind of news is there going to be on the weekend? So that's why, you know, when I'm swinging something on the weekend, I'm just kind of sometimes like, like that's why today over the weekend, I, I, I chose, um, I chose J and J, I chose Baba, I chose HD. Why? Why did I, why did I choose HD and not Amazon or Tesla? Because HD is not as crazy. J and J is stupid cheap, stupid cheap. It's low risk. <laughs> Okay, if the market tanks, it's not you're you're not gonna lose the money that, like that, right? Okay. Now this is the call out from yesterday to swing. How many how many people actually took this though? Look, what happened here? What is this? I didn't. I'm I'm not showing the the previous one, but what is this? This is my, I'm telling you my thought process here. It's a channel, but it's also, it's also, um, it's also a bear flag, by the way, on, on the previous, on the previous, um, previous frame. Look, bear flag, but what happened? What happened first? Cross and what happened up here? And to tell you, 
to tell you, look, 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 to tell you that I don't bullshit when I use the same fucking strategy that I teach you, look at the fucking time here. What time does it say? Eleven, eleven a.m. And what time does this say right here? On this, on this, but right before the break. What time does it say? Eleven. That's to let you know that I don't bullshit when I use when I tell you I use the same exact strategy that I'm showing you. Same thing. Right. This this was a what, what, what frame is this? This is a five minute. So this was a swing because it broke out of that bear flag, and that's why that's why I signaled the swing. Do you ever use stochastics cross and on a one minute chart? Yeah, sometimes if I'm going to scalp something. Okay, does that make sense to you guys? Does this this bear flag? Bear flag. Why 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 did I swing this at why did I decide to call a swing on this? When did the bear flag happen? When did it break out of the flag? End of day. End of day. Let me let, let me look for something to see to see if it matches what I was just talking about. Hold on. Um, let me go back to. Uh, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna look on my phone real quick. Five minute chart on Roku. Okay. This is what usually happens, right? We went over this on the on the last class. When you see the flag pull, when you see the flag pull, okay, and then you find the breakout, what is the distance from the breakout to the profit target usually? Don't say support or resistance, but what? The length of the pull, right? The length of the pull, not the size of the pull, the length of the pull, right? Doesn't matter how big the pull is, it just has to be long. Right. So usually, right, however long the pole is, if let's say it's a twenty dollar move, then the breakout's usually gonna be a twenty dollar move. Okay. Oh, one more thing. Why is this a good position to take? Why are you protected? Now, if, okay, if, for example, if Roku was to go up like $10, if Roku was to go up $10 and this contract cost you 200 bucks and then Roku goes up $10, how much would you essentially lose? What's the maximum you would lose? 200. Now, if this spy call cost you a hundred dollars to buy, and Roku went up ten, so let's say spy spy went up six bucks, what what usually happens? What's the best case scenario? What is the best case scenario on this? If if Roku didn't go your way, because initially, what hold on before I, before you even answer that, what is the what is the um what is the bias here? Are we more bearish or bullish? We're more bearish, okay? Just remember that. We're more bearish because our Roku, our Roku puts is, 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 is more expensive than the spy call, right? Now, when you have the spy call, if Roku goes up 10 bucks and you lose two and you lose all your premium on that Roku call, I mean on your Roku puts and spy goes up six dollars, what is the best case scenario? Not, not even six, let's say six, seven, eight, nine, or even ten. You can potentially profit off the spy call. <laughs> Right, because all you, all you lose, all you lose is this. All you lose is the two hundred. And if you buy this for a hundred, and let's say you get two hundred percent or three hundred percent, you're you're making more than this. Right, you're making more than this. Who took a W on this call out? I mean, just go to the profits, profits losses section on the on the chat. I don't have the screenshots. When you hedge with spy, do you pick the same time period? I pick. I usually pick the same, the same, the same expiration, the same expiration, just not the same strike. Like, like if I if I'm more bearish on Roku, 
right? If I buy at the money, right? If I buy at the money, guys, if I buy at the money puts and I'm, and, and I'm trying to go bearish, am I going to buy an at the money call to hedge? No, because more than likely I'm going to end up, I'm going to fuck myself. That's why I go a little out of the money for the call. Why? Why do I go a little out of the money for the call? Someone guess the right answer, please. No, not, not, not just because it's cheap. Gamma. But what else? What, what? The delta. The delta is less, right? The delta is not. The, if this has a 50 delta and this has a 30 delta, I'm straight. Does that make sense? It maintains your bias. You're still bearish, right? It's just that when you get in, you're not going to be all fucking anxious holding it overnight. You know what I mean? You're not going to have a heart attack overnight, right? And make sure, right? Make sure when you buy like a spy call going, for example, here's, here's another example. If you have um, EA, um, how, much, how much do you guys think an average contract on EA is, which is active, um, um, what is it? The fuck is EA again? EA Sports, one to two dollars, so a hundred to two hundred. Okay, now if you have a spy call, right? Let's say the average contract on spy is three hundred bucks. Do you is that a good hedge if you buy one EA put and one spy call to hedge? Is that a good hedge? No, that's a terrible hedge. Your spy fucking call probably has more delta than the EA. So, but what if you buy four EAs and one spy call? You buy four EAs, it's going to cost you 600. You buy one spike call, it costs you 300. Boom. That makes more sense, right? Good. Now I'm going to go on the next slide. Gold. This is our swing from yesterday, right? But even though we swung it here, if you look at the bigger picture, what is this? You have a symmetrical triangle here that broke out. Okay? It broke out now did it hit the profit target even if you got in here and you and and and, and, and let's say you, you took profits or you lost money what happened again you can't really see it but what happened here ema crossed before the ema crossed what crossed come on right See how fucking, come on guys, you guys got this, I'm telling you. Okay, now, Bank of America, pattern recognition, right? This is why, this is why patterns are so fucking important, right? You have a range that broke all the way down into a, what is this? This is a, this, look how beautiful this looks, guys. Like, my, my fucking... Like I can, I, I can probably sell this to a hedge fund manager for like a, a million dollars. Like, hey, look at my charting. Boom, and it broke out. Broke out right at right here, right at the support. It crossed and it broke out. The stochastics, I don't have it on because I wanted to see the bigger picture here, but it did the same thing. Stochastics crossed first, and then this crossed. Okay. Nvidia. Now, this was today. Okay, this was today. Remember, whoever's in the group, we were talking about Nvidia all fucking day. I was like, break above this for calls. Profit target three twenty six. Profit target three twenty eight. But why did I make this call out? What is this question mark here? This is this is a fill in the blank for you guys. Why? What is this? How many days did it form resistance on the same exact fucking level? One, two, and eventually three. But look at the difference. Look at the difference. Did the stochastics cross up here on the, at the resistance? Did the stochastics cross here at the resistance, like close to the resistance? On the left, no, no, it didn't. On the left, did it? Did it? Did the stochastics cross up? No, it crossed down. 
right? And here, it did, it did cross, but by the time it crossed and this crossed, we we're already, it was already fucking 11 o'clock. It was already 11 o'clock, and then we went up and we got rejected here after hours. It makes sense, right? Because there's not a lot of volume after hours. Does that make sense, guys? That makes sense, right? Now, going on this side, you see it again. You see the stochastics first, and then you see the cross here. And then you see it cross what? What do you, what do you see across here? What did it cross? The resistance, right? The resistance. Look at the candle here compared to just, just look at here. Um, there's no candle like that. You guys remember when this candle formed today? We're like, what the fuck? NVIDIA. Oh my gosh, I sold too early. Just look, right? Even if you had good risk, if you, if you, like if you use proper risk management, right? You, when from the time that we entered, right? What it did was it created a wake on the five minute chart, right? And it just bounced right at the resistance. I mean, at the support. So if you had set your stop loss right below the support, where you should have said it, there's no way it would have triggered a stop loss. But the thing is, psychologically, when you see a stock move down the opposite way and it's going down fast, you're just, you're, you have the, your, 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 your immediate tendency is just to just close it. Like, fuck, 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 it's tanking. I'm going to just close it without waiting, right? Now, if you had risk less, this is why I like risking less because I like because I end up holding things if I think that it's gonna bounce. For example, if it did, if it never hit my stop loss, okay. Would it make sense to swing the video on the second day when uh, when the stochastics and EMA cross? Yeah, you could have done that too. You could have done that too because even when the market opened, you still would have been in profit. If you got into this cross, right, you would have still been up at this right here. And yeah, of course you would have just held, you would have capitalized on, on, on the whole momentum. Okay. Does that, does that make sense on this trade? Why was this trade good guys? What did we have first first here? We have three day, three day resistance tested the third time. Stochastics cross before the EMA, EMA cross, boom. This is Amazon today. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is NVIDIA today. Why did I, why did I zoom in that much? I'm an idiot. Yeah, this is NVIDIA today. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15 minute chart or 30 minute? 30 minute. But just, I just wanted to show this bull flag that it actually showed. Just look here. Look at this. Pull, pull, look at the pole. Look how long the pole is. Pretend this is the pole and then transfer the pole here. So, isn't it the same exact fucking length, kind of? Same distance from here to here. Just got to cross and then the EMA cross with the bull flag. Bull flag right here, right? You want to, to identify a bull flag, you want to see a run up and then you want to see a sell off. You want to see a nice run up and then a sell off. Now, usually, especially in this, in this, in this picture, the sell off will usually bounce right at the support. When you see that it bounces right at the support and it reaches the top of that, 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 this, this, um, this top channel, then when you see a breakout, that's when you get in, especially when you have the, the volume up or when you have um stochastics there now this is j and j who took j and j today this fucking i signaled this for a swing but we got fucking we got 70 we got almost fucking 100 percent out of it i was like what the fuck all right <laughs> look look at the look at the look at this right um J&J &J cheap swing, 522, 521, 521 calls. At the money, you're slightly at the money, cheap. Okay? Look, 
Is this the same example like I just fucking showed you on, on fucking what did I just show you on the video? Yeah. Same example. Is it not the same thing? They did not do the same thing for three days. Well, I, didn't, I don't have this thing right here, but one, two. Does this make sense on this trade, guys? Is that considered buying the dip on the video? It's not. Look, I don't even see this as it is a dip. You are buying the dip, but you're 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 not just buying a dip. You're buying the bull flag breakout, right? You're buying the bull flag breakout, and you have this. Right? It's not just buying the dip. You're not just you know seeing the price go down, and you don't have any indicators, and you just buy the dip. Look, is this the same as the video or no? The retest. What cross first? And then, and then break out. This guy got fucking 78% on this. Who got over 80%? I'm pretty sure some guy over 80 I don't know. Would you enter at the EMA cross? Yeah, why not? Or at the break. It doesn't matter. It depends how you want to trade it. You know what I mean? It depends on how you want to do it. What if what if the breakout of the resistance is like a $10 move and, 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 you, and you're waiting for the candle to close, but you're like, oh, fuck, I'm watching this $10 move. It hasn't closed yet. I should have gotten at the cross. It's vice versa, right? Let's say you did get it at the cross and you got faked out. Now you should be like, oh, I should have fucking wait, waited for confirmation, right? See, that's the thing. That's the thing. When, 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 when things don't go our way, we start fucking justifying it by saying, oh, I should have, I should have did this. I should have did that. I should have. What you should focus on is, fuck it. I executed, right? So when is it ever the right time? Right? Everyone is a genius in hindsight. But when it comes time for you to perform and execute right then and there, you're going to be like, ah, oh, fuck, should I do it now or later? So it's usually, so usually you pick at the money or slightly out of the money in one week or two strike. It depends on how, come on. It depends on how many days I want to swing this for. Or if like, come on, we went over this, right? If we want to swing something, if J and J has an ATR of $3 and you want to catch a $6 move, do you buy a week out, two weeks out? Or three weeks out. If it has an ATR of three dollars, you want to catch a six dollar move, you're planning to sell it next week. Do you buy it next week's expiration, two weeks expiration, three weeks expiration? You just buy one week. You only want six bucks. Now, at the money, out of the money, in the money. I mean, what can you afford? If at the money is too expensive for you, don't fucking buy it. Simple. If at the money contracts, do not align with your risk management. Don't fucking buy it. Simple. If, if, if you really want to trade the stock that bad, you know what I mean? And you can't afford it. You got to look out of the money, but you also got to think if, if you're looking at J and J, right? If look, 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 if for example, for some odd fucking reason, for some odd reason, J and J was expensive and premium and it only moves $3 a day. And the only contract you can afford is one week away but a $10 strike. Would you fucking take that? Fuck no, right? Would you take that? If you're, if, if J and J moves $3 a day and the premium is too expensive for you at the money, so you can only settle with a $10 strike price away, a $10 strike price away and it expires in a week and has an average of $3 a day. Would you do that? No, right? I would rather fucking trade fucking Ford. I'd rather trade freaking penny stock. Now, this is another call I did today. Home Depot. Now, I'm going to use a Bollinger Band for this. Okay. What usually happens? What usually, what did I say when usually when you see the, um, for example, when you see the price hold above the midline or below the midline. It's usually going to continue an upward trend. Now, in this case, we had a bull flag here. 
Okay, we had a bull flag here. And we broke out, but we also found support at the midline. Whenever you find support at the midline, it's usually an indication of a continuation of that trend. The previous trend, I'm sorry. Okay, this is when I signaled um, Home Depot. Does this make sense on this? And and one more thing that I want to mention too. This this you guys see this yellow line? This is a this is a hourly trend line on HD, and it's been following it the whole time. If you guys pull up HD right now, you can see um, what made you use of Bollinger over not EMA plus stock. Ah, I'm just showing you different examples, different approaches for you to take. I'm just showing you what can work and what. Does that make sense? I can I can just take off Bollinger bands right now and I, and, I, and I'll tell you it's a bull flag. I could still I could still no it, it is stretched out because I had to I had to these screenshots were small so I had to stretch it out. What do you guys think is gonna happen with Amazon? This is a daily chart on Amazon, daily. Hopefully. You know what would it be? You know what would it be? You know what would be a crazy pattern on, on, on Amazon? If we had this cross right here and we we're about to cross up. Dang, I would definitely just here, here, here's ten thousand dollars on Amazon two weeks out. Show me, market. Show me. Show me the money. SCDG. Okay. We signaled this yesterday too. I mean today too. I mean yesterday. I didn't have who 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 trade SEDG by the way. The Amazon bull flag is a daily. You guys were in profit today, right? Especially right at the open, because we called it out and not at, we called it out at one seventeen. We opened up. I mean, we kind of we <laughs> we dipped here, but we opened. We ended up going to one twenty two from one seventeen to one twenty two overnight. One eighteen, one nineteen, one twenty one. That's a that's a five dollar fucking move. And what what happened here? Stochastics crossed. EMA crossed. I was just anticipating the cross. Facebook. Same thing. Other than other than this two. What pattern do you also see that you can you can kind of form? Is this a bull flag? Is this a triangle? Is this a bear flag? Is this a consolidation? You can form a bull flag here, right? Form a bull flag? Yeah, from previous day two. Or even here, from this support. Boom, boom, break out. But instead of, you know, let, let's say you're just like, you're just, you're just like, fuck, you know, I can't see the, I can't see the flag. I can't see the, I can't see. If you, even if you don't see the flag, what do you already see based on what we always fuck, based on just what we learn? You got here and then you got here. What's so hard, right? Look, I'm telling you all these examples I'm showing you are true. Just look at the previous day. What happened here? What happened here? Then you got this. Then you got the cross. And it went up fucking like five bucks. Or however many dollars is this move is. I'm telling you because this, I'm not, you know what I mean? Now, I want to ask you guys a question. Why is this a battle zone on SPY? And why is this a low risk zone? Amen. Have you watched all the class videos we did? One, two, three, four. Yeah, we go. We went over everything from the beginning. So I suggest you go watch those after this or whenever you have time, you know, so that, no, it's fine. So you can kind of understand why. For those of you, I, I, I think I did invite like two people here today for like that are um, new. So if you don't understand a lot of this, just go on the website and then, watch the previous ones but why is this a battle zone on spy guys 
and why is this a low risk zone? Now, look at, look at, just look at these three lines. Look at these three lines. One, two, three. What happened here on the top line? It formed a support here, right? Support, and then it broke. It broke here. The fact that it, what does it mean when it broke? So if this, since this broke, who, who dominates this area? Sellers, boom, right now. We went down here, we went up here, got rejected here. Who dominates this area? Good, now we went down here, we went up here. Now, in this one, still, you have the sellers who dominate, right? Now, we got rejected here, got rejected here. Now, we, were, we fucking squeezed so hard here. This is, you guys see how hard this was trying right now? And do you guys see why it tried so hard? Because broke down here, broke down here, couldn't break, couldn't break, now it's struggling. Because this level, this level, this level, all sellers. Does that make sense? Is it starting to make sense kind of? Just by reading price action, right? Just by using common sense. Look, and why is this a low risk zone? Buyer. And you guys see what it was doing here? It was just going to range. It was going, just look at this, it was going like, it was just a little, it was having a little fucking fun up here, right? It wasn't even fucking going like this, like this, like this. It was just, it was just trading in the range. Boom. Now, once you, once buyers push through this battle zone, what do you think is going to happen here? It's going to fucking shoot the fuck up, right? Because they're not, they're, they're, at this point, it's like all the buyers are just going to fucking, does that make sense? What can potentially happen here on CRM? Up, potentially, if we cross, why? Why is this, why, why also, just not even just because it's stochastics cross, why, why also? What, what, what do you guys see here? What happened here? Sold off, sellers, right? Then what happened here? buyers then what happened here we bounce so now what buyers so now we're just waiting for this to cross once this cross that that that, that will essentially give us a signal to swing this potentially to the high okay so when you want to find swings like that right you want to find the stock you want to trade obviously in this first example we're going to look at beyond now for beyond, our team has swung this up and down this past year, okay? Up and fucking down. So this is an example of a trade that we actually took. So first, this is how your chart's gonna look. Now, you wanna go to its weekly time frame, okay? Go to its weekly time frame, just like how we did earlier. All right, start at the top, bottom, two to two, three touch rule, unless it's the top or high or low or bottom. You work your way down the middle. Now, you wanna go one year, one year, one year, one day, do the same thing, work your way from the top to the bottom down the middle. Here's what beyond chart should look like after you create the SNR levels. So now this is when you have all the levels out. Here's, you move on to the four hours. Now you have the four hour frame. After you do it on the four hours, you want to go back to the daily and spot patterns. Now, what do you find on the four hours? Swing levels. This is where I find the swing level. This is where I, this is where I essentially find the, the swing levels. Do you take the S and R for right to left or left to right? Left to right, right to left, doesn't matter. Both. Even look, 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 look. Just imagine this, right? Even if you only focus on the left side, what what will usually happen when it reaches the right side, the that the, the the support or resistance? It'll usually test. It'll usually retest. 
You don't even have to fucking look at the whole chart. You can just look on this side and see that. Look, look at this. Is this line right here support here? One. Oh, shit. Here. One. Right. You guys see this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You guys see this line, right? And this line too. You guys see this? Now, let me move this to the right. What happened here? It got rejected. A whole fucking year. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry, not a year, a couple months. You see how it retests itself? Go back to the daily chart now and you want to start spotting the patterns. So these are actual patterns we traded for our swings on beyond. You see the range, range, breakdown, pennant, flag, flag, breakout. Then you want to go back to the four hour chart to see if you missed any more patterns. This is when you start doing more analysis right here. You got a pattern here. There's the blue. The blue highlights are patterns we missed on the daily that we were able to spot on the four hours. Boom, 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 boom. You have a triangle on beyond. Now on the hourly chart, you can see how clear everything looks. You can easily spot what may happen. You can trade using better conviction, using anticipation and analysis. Now, ranges, right? We went over this, but you always want to watch for breakouts on ranges. How many of you have actually traded a breakout on a range? And did it work? It's crazy, right? Watch for a breakout on ranges, whether it be downside or upside. Ranges, ranges are very important because it shows you that the price is trading within a range and it struggles to break either above or below. Once it gets enough volume and push, range breakouts is one of the best setups to trade, especially if you can find where the next critical support and resistance level would be. Previous support became profit target on this range that broke to the downside. Now, let me see. Let's look at this, okay? Is this support here? Resistance support on this side? Is this resistance support on this side? Once it broke out of this range, wouldn't 96 be your next profit target? Because that's when, the, that, that's when it last tested from here. How much, how much dollar move is that on beyond? in one day and then right let's let's say you took profits here you saw this go up you saw this potentially retrace and then you're back at this level and then let's say you see this triangle and it broke down even if you get in here your profit target is still here even if you get in here from let's say 90 or 80 80 88 maybe here broke all the way down to 72 and then after the 72 what do you see Right at, right at the support line. What do you see right at the support line? Bear flag. Where's your next target? The next fucking thing. Boom. Other than ranges, patterns are very important as well. If you can spot these patterns, you can use these patterns with the indicators you use to help you have a better conviction on your trades. Now, has anyone ever used any other patterns, I mean, any other indicators other than stochastics and EMAs for, the, for this? You guys can use RSI. You can use a, a TTM squeeze. Um, Rod is going to go over a bunch of things on TTM squeeze. Like, it's going to be crazy. And then um, Next week, you're going to have Julian come up. Julian's going to show you his EMA strategy, which is pretty insane. So, yeah, you guys are, you guys are, there's a lot of fucking shit that you guys haven't even seen yet, by the way. Yes, that's, that's Jay the Trader. Now, um, you can use these patterns with the indicators you use to help you have better conviction, especially swings. Okay. Look at this example. 
Look at these bullish pennants and flags. Once they broke out, you can use previous support resistance to have as profit target. Now, pay attention. Just pay attention to this right here. Did these patterns, did these patterns break out to their respective profit targets? This is a profit target. Why is this a profit target? Because of this. Why is this the next profit target? Because of this. Why is this the next profit target? Because of this. Why is this the next profit target? Because of this. Why is this the next profit target? Because of this. And you guys see, you guys see now, look, 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 look. Do you guys see how now it has, now it's at like its own little high. It just starts freaking going fucking gobble gooblop right here. You guys see how, how smooth it was. The transition was to the next profit target. And then once you got up to here where we don't, you know, where it's like, it hasn't tested before. It's like, fuck. Yeah. You can apply this to Forex. Of course you can. It's technical analysis. You can apply this to Forex, fucking, I don't know, anything. Real estate, bonds. You know, if, you have, if, if you've had enough, if you've had enough um, girlfriends in the past, you can just chart them up. Like, that's, like you can just, you literally find both flags and triangles. Let's say you had, let's say you had a hundred X's right here. You just line them all up. Um, yeah, we lasted eight months. We lasted, uh, we dipped down fucking three, uh, two months here. Oh yeah, we had a good three months here. We had a fucking, oh, here, we had this bear flag. I fucking, you know, I cheated, so we fucking tanked. Here, you know, big bull flag. I, 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 um, you know, we got engaged. We broke out, had a baby. You know what I mean? You can use this on anything. It's technical analysis, right? All you're using is just um, historical data to kind of figure out what might happen. That's it. See, you can see that these levels tend to retest. So we caught the move down. We caught the move up. In this example, we're gonna show how the stochastic oscillator can help you determine where the stock may go. The stochastic oscillator determines momentum. Once you see that the red line, red, red, has crossed the purple, it means the momentum has what? What's the word? Remember this word, shifted. Look, where did it cross? You see how, you see how it kept going down here? What happened here? It, the momentum, the selling, Momentum, what happened? Did what? Shifted. Shifted. Right here. Once it crossed, shift. Look, 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 look. Guys, pay attention to this. These. What did the what, what did the stochastics do here? Where did it go? Under. It went under, right? Meaning what? Meaning bearish momentum. Now what happened here? It shifted. And then once we got to here, what happened? We broke out and where are we? Does that make sense? You guys see the shift, right? Let's look at the same stock, but different pattern and see if the stochastics is the same as the previous example. So this example I'm showing you actually happened before, before this one, before the one I just showed you. So this came after this, even though they look the same, you can see the price is not the same, right? 72 here. Oh shit. 108 here, right? 96 is the same pattern, but just different, right? 72. So here's another pattern on the same time frame. It actually happened before the previous example. You can see in this example is the classics crossed as the breakout happened, indicating a what? A shift in momentum. In this case, the breakout is pendant. It did this not shift at the same time. Look what happened here. 
Look at the momentum, right? Down, right? We were below, we were below the 20 here. And then once we got up to the end of this flag pennant, we shifted, eventually leading to the breakout. JPM. Now, other, look, just look at this. You don't even, sometimes you don't even have to look at the crosses. Like you can just, how many of you have seen how, how candles tend to react to EMAs and how it sticks to it as like a resistance level going down or a support level going up? It just keeps bouncing right off the line. This is just an easy example, right? You can see it just, it kept rejecting it every single time it tested the EMA. Now this is the 21, this is the 21 day moving average. I mean, sorry, this is the nine. NVIDIA. In this example, did the crosses, did this, did this two crosses work to the downside and to the upside? Like in this time frame, and in, in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in eight days, could you have traded NVIDIA to the downside and then exit and go straight to the upside? just based on our strategy why you saw the stochastics first and then the ema now look at the price 288 to like 281 right here just this boom and then what happened we found support and then what happened here we did what here so let's say you swung this to the downside and then you see the stochastics right here at the support what is this we just talked about it a shift you just, now there's a shift in momentum, boom, right? Now, once you see the shift in momentum, what are you waiting for? Exactly, EMA, you're waiting for the EMA now, right? Plan your trades, trade your plan. Inexperienced traders react emotionally and only value short-term outcomes as an indicator of success or failure. If you reap a loss, right? Try not to judge that as bad. Don't even label that experience as loss. Just label it as experience and accept it as it is. A lot of fucking people, when they take a fucking loss, they're like, ah, mommy, is, is, my, room, is my room still there? You know what I mean? Like, just accept it. It is what it is, you fucking lost. Right? That's it. Just, 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 what is it called? Revert back to the mean and just, you know, relax. Even though you lost money, you, you put yourself in that situation. You wanted to trade. You decided to put money down and risk. It's like you going to the casino and playing blackjack or poker and losing your money and you're fucking mad at the dealer. What the fuck did he do to you? you know I mean, all he's, he's doing is he's doing his job. Just like how the market's doing its job. Although, the, of course, you know, the system is set for us to fail. It's still, you, you know, you've seen the profitability of people. This way, you're likely to create an aversion towards losses, which are inevitable. Can everybody say this fucking word right now? Inevitable 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 i hate when people come into the group oh, i fucking lost on your signal today yo you want to get slapped now or later it's inevitable and part of the game yeah just like this kid today he was like yeah i lost on your signal yesterday and today and then we had some fire signals today and i was just like you know what bro did, did, did you make money today like i tagged him i was like did you did you make money like, come on. Know when you're getting out before you even get in. Have backup plans just in case it doesn't hit your profit target. Like, let's say, let's say you have a profit target. Let's say you're getting in at 100, your profit target's 110, right? This is what you should do. It's, sometimes it's good to buy more than one contract. Why? Because you can let things run even more. You can say, you can be like, oh, fuck. 
or up five bucks. We have five dollars left until the next profit target. But stochastics are, are going down. This and this is going down. I'm just gonna, what you should do is you just cut one contract because now you're keeping that profit from that one contract. You're letting the other one run. Now, if that um, if that candle breaks below where you sold it at, where you sold the first contract, then just 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 take the profits. That's it, and then look for another trade or or or, or you know go about your day. Hey, there's this quote. I just wait until there's money lying in the corner and all I have to do is go over there and pick it up. I do nothing in the meantime. What do you guys think about that one? Like, is this correct? Is this true? You wait until, what, what does it mean to wait until money's lying in the corner? It means you don't fucking just stare at the screen fucking every, every one minute candle. You're like, it's bullish. It's bearish. It's bullish. It's bearish. It's bullish. It's bearish. The setups will come, right? You're going to see the pattern show up. Every single time we do class, we go over some, some of the stocks that we, that, we, that, we, that we traded. And every single time you guys see what? What do you guys see every single time? Patterns, patterns, patterns. It's, it, it'll happen. It'll come. People just aren't patient because they see one thing run. They hear something else from another person. They hear something else from another person. And they're like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm going to get in because they got in. Sheep following fucking sheep. Your job as a trader is to manage risk. And this teaches you that failure is, is not scary after all. It's often a springboard to success. You guys agree with me on that? Is failure, who's scared, who's afraid to fail here? I mean, everybody's afraid to fail, right? I'm not even gonna lie. Every, you know, everybody's afraid, afraid to fail, but it's inevitable, right? Every failure, you get something out of that. Do not underestimate the power of small changes. Small changes, for example, if you're, if you're right now, you're, if, if, for example, you're a lousy trader and you don't fucking, you don't, you know, you don't make journals, you don't, you don't hold yourself accountable, you don't do this, you don't do that. Once you start making small changes, like just, just holding yourself accountable, that's a small change that can go a long way going over um, um what is it called jotting down all your trades is a small change but it goes a long way because now you can spot everything you're doing wrong you can spot whatever you're doing wrong if you let's say you get in a trade today you're like ah oh, fuck i lost why did you lose you write that down so the next time you see the same thing happen you're like oh this happened to me last time so i'm not going to do this the best traders stick to their approach and they fully understand and accept that they will have periods of underperformance because no approach will work all the time. Underperformance. Now, what can be a cause of underperformance? It doesn't even have to be you. What can be, what do you guys think can be a cause? Like what can be a cause of underperformance? Sideways market, that's gonna cause underperformance because you're gonna stress yourself the fuck out and you're not gonna perform the way you were before because you're dealing with all these volatility, all these you know fluctuations in price. What do you do if a play does not hit your PT and was only one or two dollars away? These hap this happened on to me on Tesla this week and went from green to red because of it. Do you consider it to be green? Not necessarily. What if what if what if your support what if your support what if your support and resistance is literally a dollar too high or a dollar too low? That can be one thing, you know. Or, like I said, if you buy more than one contract, you, you, you can easily get out of one and just let the other one run. It's all, it just all depends on how the, the day is. Ninety percent of trading is psychology. Waiting is psychology. Seizing opportunities. Cutting losers short. Can you analyze Tesla 
Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, I, I'll do it. Just, just let me finish this real quick. Okay? I'll analyze that for you. Hold on. Where is it? It looks bullish on one time frame and bearish on one another. Um, what did I say when we went over this, guys? What happens when the time frames don't match? If you're looking at a, if you're looking at an hourly and it's bullish, and then you look at a four hour and it's bearish. What is it? It's bearish. If the four hour is bullish and the, and the, and the one hour or the 15 minute is bearish, then the price is bullish. Even though it might go down fucking in the next 30 minutes, it's, it, might, it might shoot up tomorrow. That makes sense? Always want to go with a higher time frame. Cutting loser short. Ability to scale, deciphering information, cutting out noise, going hard when there's an opening and flying light when there's none. Okay. When you get a signal to initiate a trade or close it for a profit or a loss, just take it, right? Don't overthink it. Stay consistent. Now, consistency, what, 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 do you, what is your guys' definition of consistency when it comes to trading? By the way, I just want to know. What's consistency to you? Is consistency having a bunch of green days? Is that consistency to you? Consistency is being able to stick with your plan and not and not deviate from it just because just because one thing goes wrong, not breaking your rules, not getting greedy. If you know your system works and you're consistent in terms of executing your strategy and following your plan, then the money's gonna come, obviously. You can't be consistently profitable if the emotional part of your brain is in the driver's seat every time you look at the market and make decisions. As a trader, it is very important that you learn to be okay with your entry and exit decisions. Okay. You are rarely going to catch the exact top or bottom. How many times have you guys got mad at where you entered and you start beating yourself up over it? Like, Oh fuck. I'm an idiot. Why the fuck am I so stupid? Don't right. I mean, at the end of the day, what are you guys paying for right now? I mean, for those who aren't, no, you're paying for experience, right? You learn from everything, right? You, just like this. Look, just like this, for example. Here, let me give you guys an example. You don't know how to drive. So you go on YouTube to watch videos on how to drive, okay? Now, what happens when you get in the car? Are you going to immediate? are you going to meet, like, let's say you, you don't know how to drive. You're looking at a fucking racer on, on, on YouTube. You're looking at a fucking drifter. You're looking at a, a, a drifter. You're looking at some guy who drifts cars and you get in a car. Are you going to be able to do the same shit that he does? For example? No, right. You have to first learn. You got to learn how to do it. You got to experience it yourself. You got to feel the stick. You got to feel the pavement. You got to feel, you got to learn, you got to, you got to fucking know how it feels to be in that car. You got to develop, you know, a, a, a second nature with that car. You have to get a feel for the car. For example, my Challenger, right? When I first fucking got it, I was like, holy shit. Now it's like, fuck, I can fucking squeeze through a fucking alley. I can, I, I, you know? I can squeeze it through two fucking cars. When at first I'm like, damn, this is a fucking boat. Does that make sense as an example? Right? The day you plant along, as long as you have a plan, you follow, that's all that matters. Okay? Now, the day, remember this, the day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit. Be patient. Amen. I like that. All right, guys. That's class for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it.
damn early today. That was one hour and 40 minutes. No problem, guys. Um, who, oh, I forgot. Whoever asked me about Tesla, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer you on the Discord. Hope you guys enjoyed today. If you guys enjoyed today, you know, drop a comment on Discord on why you liked it today. Whatever, if you want to. If you don't, you know, doesn't matter. Okay, guys. Dude, did you know you can go live on YouTube and Facebook at the same time with this? What? I should have been. I should have been.